In this video, I'll be introducing the order topology. First of all, let me introduce what a relation is. You may also hear this called a binary relation. So what a relation is, is it's going to be a subset, R, of a space X. This is any set crossed with itself. This is the Cartesian product. You can see me describe that last time. And it's going to be some subset of x times x. And what we do is we say that if a pair AB is an element of R, what we will write this as is ARB. So for example, what about equals? So the equals subset is going to be a subset of x cross x. And I'll say it's going to be equal to the set of x, x, for x and x, okay? This is the equals relation, okay? Because if I have a, b, an element of the equals relation, this just means that a is equal to b, or that a is equal to b, x is equal to x. So that's the idea behind a relation, it's just pairs of elements and we have some sort of operation between the two that tells you some information. Now let's go ahead and define an order. So what an order is, it's, it's going to be a relation that gives you an order of the elements in it. So what we say is that R is an order. So this is a relation R and we call it an order if, okay, our first condition for any x and y, an element of x, such that x is not equal to y, x r y or y r x, and not both. So, for example, on the real line, say I have two points that are not equal to each other, they're two distinct points. Well, either this one is going to be less than this one or this one is going to be less than this one. So either A is less than B, or B is less than A. And it can't be both of them, because if A was less than B, is B is less than A, that violates the idea of order. Number two, is that for any X and X, X, R, X does not hold. Basically meaning, x cannot be less, less than x because it's equal to itself it's not less than this is a strict order there's no less than or equal to it's just less than and number three is that for any x y z an element of x um x r y and y r z implies x r z Okay, so this is just a simple little thing right here. If A is less than B, and B is less than C, then A is less than C. It's just translating this order. And these are the three conditions we need for this to be in order. So let's just go over it again. If I have two distinct points, I've, one has to be less than the other, and it can't be the other way around. And one element of the set cannot be less than itself, which makes perfect sense, and it's transitive. If A is less than B, and B is less than C, then A is less than C. So now let's go ahead and look at some intervals. The open interval, which is going to be defined the exact same way as it is on the real interval, except this is on a general ordered set X. And so what we usually do is we write down whatever relation we're using. And I'll just use the relation um, like a curly order, like this. I'll just use the standard straight order sign like that, even though that might get a little confusing. I'll just write it like that usually. And so this is equal to the set of x, such that x is in x, and a has to be less than x, and x has to be less than b. So if these are my two endpoints, a and b, a point x in this interval has a less than x, 
and x less than b, and they can't be equal, which is guaranteed by this condition, the number 2 condition. And then we also have the closed interval AB on an order, which is the set of x such that x is in x and a is less than or equal to, less than or equal to, so let's define this, a is less than or equal to b if and only if a is less than b or a is equal to b, which is just very simple. A has to be less than or equal to x, and x has to be less than or equal to b. Okay, and then there's also this other, this other open interval, which is the open interval between a and infinity, which is equal to the set of x, such that x is in x, and a is less than x. There's no upper condition on it. All we need to do is have a lower point, and we can go up however far the set allows us to go up. And then similarly, I could define a closed a infinity, which is, I guess you can guess it, it's just where I replace this with a less than or equal to. Okay, and then we can also have a minus infinity to b open interval, which is the set of x such that x is in x, and we have that x is less than b. So this is the exact opposite. We have some upper bound, and we go as far back as the set allows us. And then similarly, we can also have a closed B right there, where we just replace that less than, less than or equal to. Now, a common misconception is the use of this infinity here makes people think that maybe this is unbounded, but it isn't. It's not necessarily unbounded. If I have a bounded set, say on the real line, the closed interval from A to B, this still has an order on it. It's just the standard real number order, except if I look at it locally, the interval from some C to infinity is really just the interval from C until B. So if it has an upper bound, then these intervals right here are just going to be, are going to also have a maximum element. Okay, so you might be wondering, what's the order topology? Well, it's very similar to how we defined the topology on the real numbers. So the definition here, definition three. Is of the order topology. Okay, and the order topology on an ordered space x given an order less than, um, the order topology is the topology generated by, and then this is going to be the basis, which is going to be the set of all intervals a, b, or a to infinity or minus infinity to b. And this is for a, b, and element of x. So basically meaning we take all of these open intervals and we also take all of these infinite intervals. And we make that a basis and then we generate the topology like with this. Which is also what we did with the real numbers, remember? We said we take a open interval and then we create this as our basis. That's what we proved. Okay, so we just do this exact same thing, except we do it more general. An interesting property of order topologies is that between any two points, any two points, I can find two disjoint open intervals around them. Okay, so if these are two distinct points, Here's an open interval, here's an in open interval, and they don't intersect at all. The intersection of those two sets is empty. Now this is called a Hausdorff condition. I have not introduced this yet, but it uh, will be an important concept later. Uh, let's prove this. First theorem is that for any x and y, an element of this x, which is given the order topology, like that, such that x is not equal to y, there exists open u and v subsets of x such that x is in u, 
y is in v, and u intersect v is the empty set. So for any two points in an ordered topology that are distinct, there exist open sets that contain them and are disjoint, which is this idea. Now this idea gives us a lot of structure, although I have not gone into it very much. It's actually a very important property, and I will discuss it much more in the future. It's just that I'm going to introduce it with the order topology. Okay, so the proof goes like this. Suppose x is less than y by the first condition. The first condition said that either x is less than y or y is less than x because there are two different points. Okay, so x is going to be less than y is one of the conditions, and I'm going to suppose that. Then, what I'm going to do is just suppose there exists a z, an element of x, such that x is less than z is less than y. Then, the two intervals negative infinity to z and the interval from z to infinity are disjoint and contain x and y respectively. Basically meaning, I have my two points here, and then I find a third point in between them. I do these two intervals, the disjoint and they contain x and y. So this contains x, this one contains y. But now suppose that there was no z there. Otherwise, so if there was no thing in between x and y, how on earth could I do this? I cannot split it in between the two. So what might seem unintuitive but actually works is that we do this interval that takes you from there to there and this interval that goes this way. Now the reason why is because the intersection of these two would have to be in between x and y, but as we discussed, there is none. So their intersection, even though it might not look like it in this diagram, is actually empty. So otherwise, take negative infinity to y, and then x to infinity. And so, and then you're like, what about if y is less than x? And well, you just switch the two. So do the same for y less than x. So basically, the method we used is either we split it in between those two points, or we just take the open intervals with endpoints at those points. Hopefully this explains order topologies in a roundabout way. And that's it.